Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. This week, Brian decided that we should, you know, tap into one of the greatest gothic love stories of all time. So we watched 1989's The Phantom of the Opera, which I keep almost wanting to say Phantom of the Paradise. Yeah, I figured that. I was waiting for that. <laughs> um, and I have this on Blu-ray, and the only thing that it says is it's a picture of the Phantom, and it says, Robert England was Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what this movie is it's like it's it's like hey remember that guy who played freddy what if he played the phantom like <laughs> well so that was what i was expecting going into it but it was um it was okay Modern. yeah it's decent i don't know it's one of those movies where i'm like this was good but the chances of me re-watching it anytime soon are very slim yeah uh, and it, but it does. In the first five minutes, we find out that the star of this movie is the star of Popcorn, yeah. who I refer to as Walmart Winona Ryder. <laughs> but then, more importantly, her agent is played by Molly Shannon. That is such a weird, such a <laughs> weird casting choice, and it's not even like it's not even for comic relief either. No, she's it's not like, there for yeah, any reason. Yeah, no. like don't try to be. When your face just looks funny, you're you're, <laughs> you're a comedic actor or actress, and just stick stay in your lane. Don't try to branch out, Molly Shannon. <laughs> well, Has she done was, anything before this? I was, I was gonna, gonna say this was movie. like yeah, I was gonna say this is like eighty nine. This is pre SNL. This was eighty eight. Yeah, this was like. She was probably doing some stuff uh, on like USB, like uh, USB, US, wow, uh, UCB. But... <laughs> yeah, she was doing stuff at like UCB tops. Like that's the most she was probably doing. So Lauren Michaels one night was just like sitting down with his wife trying to watch a scary movie and Molly Shannon comes up and he's just like, ha, I got to get that face on my show. <laughs> and the rest was history. <laughs> and so is her career after Superstar. Oh, uh, no. Um, no, but I real was, real talk. What are you, what's she been up to? I don't know, man. I, I have no clue. I was making a joke that was seated in reality. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't think she's she's done. Sh oh, she was in uh, the Grinch. I don't um, know if that was her newest one, uh, aside from like, was. Hotel Transylvania. But that cast is like the land of misfit toys. It's like where, <laughs> <laughs> where all the celebrities just go to. In purgatory, they're in their Hotel Transylvania series. <laughs> they're just like, that phone call's coming any day. <laughs> I got some bad news. You got to go to Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Eagles wrote a song about it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the lyrics of that song also said that it's a great place to check in, but you can't check out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, all right, so... Real quick question, because one of the reasons why I keep almost saying Phantom of the Paradise, has anyone read the original story of the Phantom of the Opera? Because I haven't. Mm -hmm. No, but I actually just got an answer wrong about Phantom of the Opera today, because okay. Alexa threw me a curveball and asked me the longest running original Broadway show. Cats. I, that's what I picked. I picked A, Cats, and they they said no. It was B Phantom of the Opera going from, what? but like when it when it said original, I guess my mind thought like was like written as a Broadway play, and nothing before that. Yeah, gotcha. but I guess, See, that's, that's, I guess that's not the case. Alexa is lie. Oh, I mean that's like a that's one of those trick questions, man. Because yeah, the longest running, uh, original Broadway play, and it was original like, Broadway means that written for Broadway. Yeah, so yeah. I, I even looked at Jade. I said it's either A and D because it was A, it was A or D, and I think it's A because A was Cats, B was Fan of the Opera, C was Lion King, and D was Les Miserables. And <laughs> uh, Brian, I got some bad news. Les Mis is also based on a book. Yeah, how was it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the reason I ask is because. Just like Phantom of the Paradise, this movie also has a tie-in to Faust, and I don't know if that's in the original story or uh, not. It 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 felt so natural that I think it is. You know, I yeah, think it's a reference, just, but but that that is pretty funny because you know that's the whole point of Phantom of the Paradise, which I would guess 
cuts pretty close to the original, you know, like just like a yeah. rock and roll version. Like Brian De Palma's like, let's do a just, oh man, I wish you had a British accent because I could do like a British accent, Brian De Palma. <laughs> Oi! Uh, well, <laughs> I, I guess he's more like he's De Palma, so he's like, hey, we're gonna do a uh we're gonna do a Phantom of the Opera, but we're gonna do it with rock and roll, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's been five and a half minutes. It's about time to talk about the movie. Uh, so the film, <laughs> We've been so talking about yeah. the movie. We already talked about Molly Shannon. <laughs> uh, so the movie has the first thing that happens in the movie where I'm like, all right, that was pretty cool. Is the blood coming out of the notes on the yeah. sheet paper. It's, yeah, it's a really a cool, cool effect. effect. <laughs> like, That's funny because all of your notes so far have been my notes. Yes. Like little, um, note, note for note. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I've been, I, I wrote the exact same shit so far. Uh, and then I had a, I just wrote that burnt face certainly looks familiar, uh, when they first introduced the Phantom. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird, this movie's got time travel in it, guys. I know. Uh, Cause like, I actually have a note that's like this time travel. Oh man. So, but the best outfit of the whole movie is her outfit before they time travel where she's wearing these like thigh high black leggings slash boot kind of things. And then this crushed purple velvet jacket. I'm like, oof. You do know your thing about leggings. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was the creepiest laugh I could come up with. Too. I liked how in order to cover up the hideousness of his face, he just takes other people's skin and turns himself into Jason Siegel. <laughs> 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 He looks specifically like Jason Siegel's puppet in the Muppet movie when he had yeah. to have a Muppet version of Jason Siegel. It, 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 it's like a it's like a cross between Jason Siegel and Al Pacino and Dick Tracy. Like just <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's Al Pacino. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's Al big boy. Been... <laughs> yeah, so see, you guys say that like I'm supposed to know, but I haven't watched Dick Tracy since 1994 or something. Man, it's been oh man, I. I've rewatched it a couple times. It's got colors. That's my review. Of Dick Tracy. <laughs> well, and also, it's... I, I know that we're not Analog Jones, so Dick Tracy's probably not going to happen anytime soon. It, it if it happens, it's a Patreon. So whenever she sings, the overdub oh, does not so ridiculous. match. Ridiculous! It's yeah. really bad. Because <laughs> even even me, who believes everything he sees, like a moron. Um, you know, she's, she's doing her singing and I'm like, that's not really girl from popcorn. <laughs> yeah, she had like five credits on IMDb. Um, so yeah, it, it was popcorn. And we also recognize her from, um, curse to the bites. Yes. Yes. She did do some really good horror movie night level. Yeah, films. We appreciate um, her. She should be on a shirt. I will say, I will. Yeah. It'll sell like cakes. <laughs> Certainly not hot cakes. Very cold cakes. Very lukewarm. <laughs> um, the first kill, though, at first I'm like, okay, this You're is interesting. Suspended that? It, yeah. yeah. But then the dude shows up completely skinned inside the closet. Yes. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, all right. I remember this movie a little bit now. So and I that also always has like a, a an effect on me. I think because the first, like, the first gore that I really experienced when I was like, this is not okay, was probably like I was eight or eight or nine and it was Hellraiser. So anytime I see like a skinned body, it just like brings me back to eight year old me. That's just like, this isn't right. So this, <laughs> that scene actually did get me like, oh, a little bit. Did you, but even before that part, um, the, when, when Robert England says that you're spended and then the guy's like getting pulled up and down on the, the, the pulleys and such. Yeah. I mean, it looked fun until the dying part. Yeah. But the thing that I want to point out <laughs> is that it looks like the phantom is coming when he <laughs> slices the stage hand in the stomach. And I'm oh, like, he does do like this. Ah, oh. it's like a vinegar <laughs> stroke. It's awful. Like, no, stop it. Uh, but then, uh, uh, I, I love her. I love this, this, um, the diva, you know, the blonde diva who's like nothing is good enough for her. Yeah, because she screams so hard that she can't sing anymore. Yeah, but before that even happens, when she finds the body, she uh, or it's, it's before she finds the body, she goes and take this in. It's tailored for a sow. <laughs> I have to say, though, this movie 
didn't piss me off with the uh, the Cockney accents. Usually, uh, a you know these type of period pieces, it just like from hell, where you're just watching and you're like, oh my god, this Cockney accent is fucking god awful. They're actually all pretty decent, which yeah. I'm not going to be able to say next week for the uh, ah. for the attempted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> not it's it's not like uh, sometimes you watch these horror movies and it's just a bunch of Dick Van Dykes like walking around they're like ah oh, Mary Poppins like yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you think as... there's a phantom out there? <laughs> 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 um i actually have a great um phonetic note it, it goes my name is maddie <laughs> oh, that's shit. the that's the entirety of the note so it's just <laughs> literally just the phonetic pronunciation the rest of my notes i just realized are pretty much all just like i like this kill this kill's okay yeah. hey this is pretty cool yo someone happened to this but yeah. like it's, it's all this movie is because it's suddenly like she does her first performance. A guy gives a bad review and then it's just 30 minutes of Robert England killing people. <laughs> yeah. my It's not an ideal pick for the show. And, and most of my picks aren't going to be an ideal pick for the show because I grew up with Matt. So, <laughs> so all like the bombastic fucking horror movies are on Matt's list. So I kind of just <laughs> use, I use this podcast as an excuse you, for like there's an endless list of movies that i kind of want to see but i i don't can't want bring myself to, to do it. it yeah yeah you know that's so, so i just funny. put it on this i'm like all right I'll, I'll make the podcast watch it then i have a reason to watch it you know it's <laughs> funny that you mentioned that today because i was uh in the shower as, as is my norm to be thinking about the podcast while i'm naked and soapy uh as all of us are <laughs> often <laughs> Uh, but I was, I was thinking about my list and I was thinking about uh, like, okay, I know, I know what's on my short list and I'm thinking, man, it's mostly shit I've never seen before that I just, <laughs> I, I need a reason to watch. Exactly. But, and I think that that's the funniest thing about my list is that like, I'm the only one that's coming in where I'm like. Yeah, no, I watched this, but I'm still going to make you guys watch it too. <laughs> no, it's just because I think that with Brian and I, it's because we're we're like, hey, I I have all these good horror memories. Let's like have some bad ones. Yeah, let's fuck that shit up a little bit. Because because <laughs> the truth be told, Scott gets home from work. It's a rainy day. There's nothing to do. Megan's out with her friends. He's flipping through Prime. He sees Phantom of the Opera 1989. He's not clicking on it. No one is like, choosing to watch this movie, even though it's like I kind of want to see it. You're not like, you know what? Today's the day. Let me sit down. You take a peek at the runtime. You look at that box art. You're like, not today, Robert England. <laughs> Pretty much. But then, yeah. but then you know, <clears throat> some of the best shit that we've watched in the last calendar year has been stuff that I'm like, Ooh, I can't believe like I'm going to. It, it feels like you're procrastinating to not watch it. And then you watch yeah. and you're like, why did I ever say no to this mess? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you say when you watch all the ones that I pick, too. Uh, is... <laughs> I mean, you um, are the one that made us sing, watch Sick. Like a lady? <laughs> 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 that's a good one. Dude, looks like a lady. <laughs> well, I guess we got our busking uh, ideas for Mania. <laughs> Set. <laughs> uh anyway so i wrote down digging that decapitation that's decapitation the time... at 39 minutes followed immediately by some tasteful side boob <laughs> okay because here's the thing i wrote that and then there was a couple other decapitations so i don't remember which one i'm referring to you're probably referring uh, to the first one where it's in the i think that's the one in the, in the streets, street right? yeah. Uh, yeah um because he full-on takes a guy's head off with like a straight razor it's wild yeah. yeah and i don't know i guess because it's my pick so i feel more obligated to like really pay attention um but it took me like two and a half hours to watch this movie just for scenes like that like he was in the uh he was in the bar they follow him into the alleyway and keep in mind i'm not on my phone i'm watching the tv and then it's just a different scene and i'm like 
I what the hell just happened? I did not pay attention. I like dozed off thinking of something else. Uh, I had to rewind 15 minutes. It was 15 minutes that I was just in a blackout stare and had to rewind, rewatch the decapitation scene, make a mental note. It happened four times throughout this movie. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> like my nightmare. Yeah, my imagination gets the best of me sometimes. <laughs> you're just like thinking about boobs and then you're like, oh, 15 I, minutes have gone by. I wasn't paying attention to the movie. It's it's tough sometimes with these movies because I'm like, all right, got to disconnect from the world. And I like throw the laptop in like an area where I can't easily reach it. And then I'm just like, all right, got the notebook, got the movie on. And then something happens. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And then I like pull out my phone to like find some information on why that happened. And next thing I know, 20 minutes have gone by and I missed a whole lot of movie. Yeah. Like you just, <laughs> so Jade was laughing at me this morning. I grabbed the book and I started to read it and she starts laughing at me and I'm like, what's this girl's problem? I'm just trying to, you know, work out my brain muscles. So then she shows me this video that she posted on Instagram and I had no idea. But as I was grabbing the book, I was singing the circus theme. Like I was just like, (laughs) 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 no idea. (laughs) Just go with the flow. Oh my God. Well, if it's any consolation, I, I, covered the killer clowns from out of space theme for horrors three and that is pretty much the core of that song and so i've been doing that pretty much constantly for the last two months just it gets stuck in my head what a great song yeah i'm so excited for that i i think that's the what you just said is the biggest selling point as much as i (laughs) i love the first two horrors but Horrors 3, if it's going to have this, because I fucking loved I thought that song was so badass as a kid. The thing is, is I never liked it. I never <laughs> liked the theme to Killer Clowns because I, I thought that it was too on the nose. And then um, I guess it was sometime in the spring or summer, Megan agreed to watch Killer Clowns with me. And I'm like, isn't this co- theme song hilarious? She's like, yeah, it's really fun. And then we <laughs> got to talk with... <laughs> He, he would love at some time in the future to do a re- retelling or remake of Killer Clowns. So, uh, of course, that also spurs it on in my brain like, hey, Killer Clowns. And so <laughs> I I just it's been like Killer Clowns in my brain for the last two months. I'm more excited for Killer Clowns now that there's a motive behind it. I'm just picturing <laughs> for some reason the same house. And he's working on the script and you just kind of come in and you lean on the door and your fingers running up and down. the (laughs) the door. It's just like, so you're working on that script. Do you have a song for the intro? (laughs) I I I just happen to have horrors three in my pocket. No, see, I imagine it differently. I like where you're sitting up, but I imagine he's sitting there and he's tap, tap, tapping away on his keyboard or his typewriter. Who knows? And Scott just kind of like walks in and he's got a guitar around his neck and a little (laughs) tiny amp and he just puts it inside the door. And just is like gently playing, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, am I bothering him? Just noodling around, doing a cover." Yeah, the clown. Just, just what are you around. working on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so much less like sexually suggestive than my brain was going uh, because of the finger, like the the finger going lazily up and down the doorway. I was just thinking like sexy sec- secretary kind of thing. Yeah. When when did I become the perv and horror movie night become like G rated? I like I was it. Say probably, probably around the uh, the time that you talked about your obsession with the stockings, oh. <laughs> the the towel based kill where he's just crushing a dude's head inside of a towel in a sauna because you got some naked dudes and blood coming through a towel. Like, what more do I ever want? Yeah, I mean, it worked. It got me where I needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have a note and I don't. I think this word says unskinning, but I think I wrote this. Uns- oh, yes. The unskinning scene is worth the price of admission when he's like peeling off all the pieces of his face to reveal like the really good gory effect. Yeah. Yeah. Underneath. It's it's gross. <laughs> it's, I, I it's, uh, love the good. effects. I really do. I mean, they're not perfect at all, but. This movie was entertaining for sure. Like I, yeah, I did yeah. not, I did not dislike my watch. But it's not a movie that I'm going to six months down the road turn to someone and say, "Hey, have you ever seen Phantom of the Opera with Robert England? You know the guy that played Freddy. You should watch this." <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing that's like 
great about this movie and there's nothing that's terrible about this movie yeah this is going to be one of those movies that when i'm getting ready to edit like the best of uh the like year four i'm just gonna be like was that a good movie <laughs> like scrolling through like i think i enjoyed that one i can't remember and then i'll listen to the episode and be like oh yeah that movie was fun like it's about as fun as a decapitated head in a punch bowl the old party no trick. It's, it's soup head yeah, soup. It's soup which makes it cooler because it's like started to like cook burn the skin and yeah it was cool yeah like no, that. Some, some good shit there um and but, then, like, <laughs> they really rushed the ending of the movie. They did. So it, much <laughs> happens. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, there's, oh, man, there's a big chase. And then she's like, and she sucked back to the more modern time. But don't worry, Robert England's there, too. She tears off the skin, stabs him, and then, like, finds out that he still might be around. <laughs> like, she, did, she burns the music. And then what really upsets me is that they had a script for a sequel, which would have just been... Like the Phantom, just Roman modern time New York, just like killing people to get to her, and I feel like that could have been fun, but it also probably would have stepped so far away from the Phantom of the Opera concept. Yeah. So I mean, this movie had some like a little bit of like 1980 dumped on it. Um, well, yeah, in 1989, like, it's it's gonna have just the slightest tinge of the early 90s in there. Yeah, yeah, and. uh you know, as far as like kind of like the new age stuff, I the one thing I do respect about this is I'm a sucker for the universal uh, original horrors. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I always ideally was like, yo, I would love them to remake these, but I don't like the creative freedom that comes with the remakes. And this one kind of I would say out of all like the remakes kind of stays true to the original. Not a lot, but more than others, you know, like more. <laughs> It's like a 1980s gorier version of Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, I book. just kind so of like, yeah, they'll, I, we'll do Dracula, but we'll get like Gerard Butler and make him a fucking sex symbol and fucking. Well, that but that's <laughs> different. That's based on the musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber, where that is exactly what the Phantom is. Like that, you can't compare the the musical version of Phantom of the Opera to the Universal film Phantom of the Opera. No, wait, 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 wait. Dracula. very different. I was, yeah, I was comparing but, Dracula. Yeah, no. the the Dracula no. 2000 is what he's talking about. <laughs> To be fair, Gerard Butler played both. So <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Gerard Butler played both. I, I'm I surprised. Remember. I didn't know that he could sing. I knew he was attractive, but that's about totally it. Totally wrong. I can like, let me check this now because I could have just pulled something completely out of my ass. But if I'm right, then I'm really proud of myself. Phantom of the yeah, Gerard Butler was the Phantom of the Opera in 2004. Yeah, it, don't wait. don't pat yourself on the back for that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is that a stage version of the play? Yeah, that's 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 them doing the musical as a film. So yeah, apparently I'd... Gerard Butler can sing. Wow, <laughs> what what can't that guy do? <laughs> Let's see, who else is it? I, Patrick Wilson. Wow, I don't know most of these people. Mini Driver, and a whole lot of. I think they got a lot of. I'm wondering if this is one of those ones where it's like, ah, Gerard Butler can't sing too well. So we're going to need to pull a lot of the actual stage cast in here to cover that. Yeah. Up. And um, it's it's a movie. They're not above um, dubbing and musicals. Yeah. Hey, it's Joel Schumacher, you know, yeah. so the one lady that got pushed off the boat from uh, West Side Story. She couldn't sing. Jesus Christ. Or um, fell. Allegedly fell. <laughs> Wait, so, is that the Disney Cruise one? No, that's the one where they think Christopher Walken may have had something to do with it. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, there's yeah. like a famous dead celebrity thing where they were like her and her husband and Christopher Walken were on a boat and then she just like drowned and it just seems highly suspicious and they're just like, yeah, we all know. He just She just went in the water and she never came out. Yeah, nobody like <laughs> nobody drowns, man. I mean, people drowned. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you, you go on a, yeah, you you go out in the open sea with your husband, and you and one of, only one of you comes back. That person's a murderer. <laughs> Point blank period. <laughs> Pushing someone off a boat just seems so so easy. That's why people do it. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> it's <laughs> you ever see Push Mama from a train? <laughs> I kind of wish that instead of them shooting this movie and having these plans for the sequel, that they would have like just kind of smushed them together and maybe trimmed down 
a little bit. A lot of the back, yeah, it's too much. It would have been yeah. a much better film if it was like half period piece, half modern. Yeah, and then just put a lot of that like super gory, gory, gory kills into the modern day. Like he could just kill a dude on the street by tearing his head off with a straight razor. I'm fine with that. That scene didn't really provide any anything at the point that it showed up. I I would get just as much joy out of it if it was towards the end of the movie. So like. I don't know. I think that they could have reassembled this a little bit better, but you know, this movie makes me wonder, Brian, how, how did you, uh, how'd you, how'd you do that thing that you do? What do you mean? Like, let's get six degrees to something real quick. Oh, oh okay. Robert England was in fun house massacre with our favorite, ugly actor, Clint Howard, who was in the paper with Michael Keaton. All right. He was in Beetlejuice. There you go. So you got that Clint Howard connection. That's good. Yeah. So you're making a weird... Uh, I, I was like, okay, so he's doing a thing with a bunch of classic rock songs, he said, and I wonder, and then ask me how I do that thing I do. <laughs> Breaking my heart into a million pieces, <laughs> like you always do. Well, I tried so hard to forget you, girl. But it just, um, right, so. You know, hey, so here's a quick question. Do you prefer the <laughs> Wonders version or the the uh, Newfound Glory version? Because I, Wonders version. Really? Because I actually prefer the Newfound Glory version. I like the Newfound Glory version, but like Newfound Glory has this weird thing. I love both of their albums, both of the from Screen the screen to your stereo. stereo. But like they kind of like, especially the first one, like. A lot of those covers, from a musical standpoint, kind of just bleed together. It's one just long, like, we're just going to play real fast and sing whatever song's coming to our head Yeah, vibe to them, um, which is fun. It's fun, but it's not a game. It's not a game. <laughs> it's not. I, w- I want to play the game, Dad. <laughs> uh, Eugene Levy saves those movies from themselves uh, sometimes. No. <laughs> He couldn't save, uh, what's it called? American Wedding is real bad. <laughs> no, I like American Wedding. The first uh, Book of Love and the Naked Mile. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Book Band of Camp. Love? He couldn't save Band Camp. Yeah. Book yeah. of Love is like the third one that doesn't have any of the main cast besides uh, the Shermanator <laughs> and Eugene yeah. Levy. Okay, I got it. Is the, the Shermanator star in any horror movies? Because I definitely feel confident we can get him on this show. <laughs> <laughs> He was in the mist. We got we got a connection. Yeah, he was in the mist, and he played thirty year old Gil in the last Sharknado. Mm. Oh man, I see. I don't care for Sharknado. I don't either. Most human beings shouldn't. Yeah, it's that's not a B movie. B movies are only fun if they don't realize that they're like. Uh, well, yeah. maybe that's not the way to say it, but you know what I mean. Like, B movies aren't fun if they're like really obviously in on the joke you can make a good b movie that kind of gets it but still has to have some sort of leg on let's stop winking at the fucking camera exactly he's in a horror movie that's coming out uh this year what uh the epidemic yeah you could try to get him off for that yeah (laughs) it's starring the shermanator and kurt angle I am so excited. <laughs> the wrestler? That is some serious, yeah, that's some serious juxtaposition right there. If it's like a buddy cop movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when you guys said Book of Love, I was, I'm, immediately my brain goes to, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it was uh, the same title. There was, I thought that there was a movie called Book of Love that came out in the 90s that was a, um, it was a 1950s. Uh, but I think you're thinking of 1990 starring Kenneth Coogan or Keith Coogan. Did you see the first one that came up? Book of Love 2016 is starring the youngest Stark girl. And yes, you are correct. 1990 Book of Love. It's it's not good, but I definitely but it's, it's it's a thing <laughs> that I watched when I was a kid. <laughs> hey, Toxic here. And Meridon too. We're the hosts of the Overleague podcast. Are you a fan of Overwatch League or just a fan of Overwatch in general? Well, if you are, we break down matches and all other Overwatch happenings, and we won't judge your main. Tune in every other Tuesday to the Overleague on Geekscape and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so what was your guys' double features? I'll, I guess I'll go. Um, my double feature would be Adventures of Ford Fairlane because they both star Robert England. 
They're both not great, but I enjoy both of them. And they're about a year apart. That's it. In a, in a similar vein, I was going to pick Wishmaster because it also features Robert England and it's not so great, <laughs> but it's got some really good kills. We got to do a Wishmaster sometime soon. It's coming. I, I've been practicing my Wishmaster impression for so long that I'm just waiting for one of you fuckers to pull the trigger. Well, then I'll... I'll. Well, why don't you just tell me which one will get the most laughs? L-A-F-F-S. Laughs. I mean, they're all absurd. We probably should watch the first one for context. Uh, <laughs> do you really need context for this shit? Listen, buddy, did you really need to watch all the sequels to a movie that we're talking about in May? Uh, <laughs> I sure didn't, and they are not... <laughs> <laughs> and there are no boobs in any of them. <laughs> All right, so All right, what was your double my double feature, feature is uh, Dark Man because it also revolves around a guy ripping his face off all the time. Oh yeah, wow! But I'll wow. Wow. But I'll start with I'll start <laughs> with Dark Man and then fall asleep to uh, to to Phantom of the Opera nineteen. Yeah, Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. If there was ever a horror movie that's like, hey, I'm just gonna put this on and just gently just, just chill out off. yeah just 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 right into sleep. <laughs> like, while watching that, robert england's vinegar strokes <laughs> just you know you're watching it it's like oh i'm not falling asleep but your eyelids they just kind of keep they're, you're blinking but the blink keeps you go going longer, a little bit longer, longer every time, time yeah <laughs> god do you know my life like, too oh. well <laughs> and the next thing you know you open your eyes and it's credits and you're like i don't know there was something i guess <laughs> but you feel real relaxed you're like oh man i was only asleep for 45 but i feel good i feel good for the whole day now <laughs> that's phantom of the opera guys that was phantom of the opera from 1989 is picked by brian um you can check out all of the episodes that we've done uh, past, present, and you know, in the future, you can find episodes there too at hmmpodcast.com. If you got some time, go ahead and rate and review us on iTunes. Um, holy shit, dudes, we are less than a month away from Monster Mania. I can't fucking wait. We've got some new shirts coming on the way, and it's this is big. I'm gonna say this because I think this is awesome. The newest set of shirts are being printed by our friends at Studio House. They are a huge t-shirt company, and it's great that we have some type of partnership with them on a t-shirt. It makes me very excited. So go support Studio House as well. And don't forget that you can always email us at hmnpodcast at gmail.com and hit us up on all of our social media at hnnpodcast on all of the different things, the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Instagram. And we will be back next week with a special guest, but he's only going to be able to pop on for about five seconds and then he's got to go. But we're going to have a great time. We're going to be hanging out in a bridge and it's going to be a gooey good time. So tune in next week. Boom. listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.